My name is Ollie, and in this video, we're going to be taking a close look at the creepy art and animation in 2009's Coraline. You may be wondering, are they reviewing a kid's film? Nope. Make no mistake friends, Caroline is definitely a horror film and we'll get into that later. For now, butcher that subscribe button and get ready to plunge into the otherworldly nightmare of Caroline. Before we get started, I have to let you know that this video contains spoilers for Coraline. I know it's kind of an older movie, but if you haven't seen it and don't want any spoilers, there's the door. Bangs and I really wanted to delve deep into the art and make a really special video for you, so a few spoilers were necessary. Coraline is a stop-motion animated film and is based off a novel by English author Neil Gaiman. Director Henry Selleck helms the production and is certainly no stranger to stop-motion animation as he also directed the beloved stop-motion classic The Nightmare Before Christmas. In fact, the two films have lots in common, especially in the way they both blend tones of childlike wonderment with dark and sometimes morbid imagery. It all makes sense because Gaiman's love for The Nightmare Before Christmas is quite evident. I love Nightmare Before Christmas. Like I said in the intro, Coraline is a horror film masquerading as a children's animated feature. In classic horror film spirit, you've got the protagonist, Coraline Jones, who is ushered into an otherworldly adventure by a malevolent entity. This entity takes the form of her mother and constructs an entire other world which Coraline traverses. It's all fine and good at first, but soon things become sinister. There are some truly grotesque and disturbing scenes in the film, like a character's mouth being sewn shut, among others, interwoven with a fair amount of dark humor. Throw in a few startling revelations and all of this ultimately leads to a terrifying cat and mouse showdown at the end. I really enjoyed the story in Coraline. It's truly magical. And while it appears really straightforward on the surface, looking a little closer at the characters, sets and props can reveal a lot of chilling details. I really like the art style in Coraline because the film gets its unique look from Japanese concept artist Tadahiro Usugi, whose own art style is influenced by late 50s and early 60s American advertisements. The intriguing thing about Usugi's concept art for the film was his use of color. You see, the film takes place within two different worlds. There's the real world which Usugi depicts with a muted color palette, and then there's the mysterious other world which boasts an incredibly vibrant set of colors. I noticed that scenes taking place in the real world looked a lot more like modern horror films with their grungy look and feel than scenes in the other world. The actual horror setting, which looked more like you'd expect a children's animated film to look. The puppets used for the film are made of silicon and house an intricate poseable skeleton, making them very animatable. Even the hair on the puppets can be warped and bent if needed. The characters' faces are made up of two removable parts. See this line along the middle? This is so that the animators can swap out the parts to create a bunch of different facial expressions. The tiny puppet clothes and accessories were also meticulously crafted by hand, using custom parts and the insane thing is, they're completely animatable through their own internal wire structure. A lot of the post effects are practical and handmade too. This fire effect is hand drawn and the fog in this scene was made using dry ice. You'll hear the term handmade a lot in this video. As an animator, the film left me in awe, knowing that most of what I saw on screen was handmade. Stop motion is truly the Rolls Royce of animation. You've got tons of extravagant little puppets, props and sets, which are all diligently made by hand and animated by being moved little by little over time. Each frame of a scene is photographed and spliced together to create a full animation cycle. The animators are delivering a performance through the puppets. Listen to what one of the animators says. You start one place, you have an idea of what you're gonna get, and by the time you're done, it's never exactly what you envisioned because the puppet has a mind of its own. This unpredictability is interesting because it affords the character movement a certain natural randomness that would have been hard to mimic with 3D animation. Every character in Coraline is incredibly well designed. I literally mean every character. An artist made lots of bold design choices too. Coraline herself is hyper stylized wearing a whimsical color palette supported by a cast of equally colorful and endearing side characters who are animated in strange and unique ways that reflect their personality. Like Coraline's dad's slow slot-like movements. 
or Mr. B who maneuvers around like a trapeze artist despite his comical proportions. The characters are a joy to watch and I really did feel for them as their designs, although quirky and humorous, convey a certain sadness and exhaustion which you can see in their pale skin tones, droopy postures and bags under their eyes. The melancholic tone of the real world is directly contrasted against the over-the-top fantastical nature of the other world. But not all characters are designed to be endearing, some are trying to be really scary. Coraline's other mother, the main antagonist of the film, sports some seriously chilling character design. She gradually transforms throughout the movie to reveal her true form. When she's first introduced to Coraline, she looks much like her real mother, with a few exceptions like the eerie buttons over her eyes and her perpetual fake smile, which makes it seem like she's wearing a human mask. She then takes on a tall, slender look, which reminds me of Cruella de Vil. Her skin becomes pale and her facial features distorted. Finally, she transforms into an arachnoid creature, skulking around on additional legs. She's got a spiky thorax shaped back with textures on her clothes being inspired by patterns found on actual insects. There's these black cracks all along her face which I think is super interesting because the sharp contrast between the black cracks over her white mask like face look really striking and it's fitting because at this point in the film the happy mask she was wearing has completely shattered revealing her true nature. The stunning sets and backdrops in Coraline are also handmade. A big standout moment is the magical garden scene where a dizzying number of unordinary flowers, plants and fauna come to life in imaginative ways. The artists came up with inventive ways to populate the scene with seemingly endless amounts of props like creating paper cutouts and using mirrors to duplicate flowers. Fiber optic lights were also used in a rig as a neat practical effect. So it's fair to say the sets and props really impressed me. And not just in the way they look, but even in the way they're animated, like surfaces decaying, or this scene where a balcony comes crashing down. And my favorite piece of environmental storytelling in the film, where two characters move through the set as it deconstructs, revealing a plain white background which alludes to the fact that the other world is an unfinished construct. This transition actually reveals a lot about the other world and the mysterious entity architecting it. As you can tell, the production here avoids the computerized look and feel at all costs and the resulting on-screen visuals are breathtaking, especially when you peek behind the curtain and witness the immense level of creativity the artist approached the film with. But I wondered if the outstanding visuals made it difficult to tell the film apart from a computer animated movie. I definitely thought Coraline was CG animated at first, but let's compare it to an actual computer animated film that came out during the same year, Disney Pixar's Up. The smooth visuals in Up are perfection. They're almost too perfect. Notice how controlled these textures are versus the organic rough look of surfaces in Coraline. Another glaring difference is in the way the character's hair is presented. The hair in Up has a lot more bounce to it, opposed to the hair in Coraline which tends to look a little stiff despite being well animated. These two different styles and approaches totally work in their respective movies. One isn't better than the other. In Coraline, the rough handmade surfaces have a harsh grungy quality to them. This benefits the atmosphere, narrative and themes in the film. For example, the movie literally opens up with these nightmarish metal limbs constructing a door by hand and this idea of an otherworldly creature making a seemingly benevolent object is echoed later in the film when the other mother constructs a fantastic dreamlike world to trap Coraline. Coraline is a reminder of the human effort and talent that goes into animation. It's a stunning film and true feat of creativity. The movie has some magical visuals and an endearing cast but always reminds you that it's still a horror film. We really enjoyed watching the film and delving into its interesting production. I think the beautiful thing about animation is the way it always seems to hold up regardless of the medium. Hopefully we'll get to explore even more styles of animation in future videos. Until then, good luck, good night and goodbye. It is I, the Doom King, Master of the Oblivion, and I require you to like, share, and subscribe, mortals. Happy Spooktober! <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> <coughs>